Hi YouTube, it's Penny. If I look tired, it's because I am. The Lord um, had me up really early this morning. Um, years ago, I was at a women's conference and the wife of Stuart Briscoe, Jill Briscoe, said these words that she'd rather be sleep deprived than God deprived. And for a gal who's used to getting nine to 10 hours of sleep a night, I thought, what? <laughs> well, now I know what she means because um, I've definitely been sleep deprived the last couple of months as the Lord's been showing me things. So before I share the dream with you that I had last night, um, I want to read the scripture that the Lord took me to this morning <clears throat> from Proverbs chapter 8. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing for a word or perverse in them. I've looked that word up. It means stubbornly disobedient or contrary. They are all plain to him that understands and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instructions and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, sorry about that. Long track. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of Yahovah is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Kind of spoke to me this morning. <laughs> riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Okay, so the dream I had was one of those kind of freaky deaky ones, I have to warn you. Um, okay, so there were three little boys. They were prepubescent, maybe like 12 or 13 years old, and they were riding bikes along um, a road. It was late at night, and they were, you know, reveling in their freedom, and they had flashlights, and as they came around a corner, interestingly the corner went to the left, um, there was a cave on the left side of the road and it had this yellow police tape um, around it, like it was trying to protect it or keep out in intruders and later I thought, oh, like a crime scene. Um, so the boys get off their bikes, they go over to investigate and as they come up to the, the police barrier, this old scary looking couple uh, came out of the cave toward to ward them off and um, you know the kids got scared and ran away so I can't remember what the face of the old man looked like but the the old lady she her face was covered with um, black and red makeup like that was supposed to make her look scary um, but all I could think is nice Halloween makeup job lady <laughs> she looked really ridiculous to me so even though it had scared the boys, I saw it for what it was. Um, anyway, so then the scene transitions, and now I'm inside the cave, and I discover what this couple is guarding. And uh, I have understanding that it has come from outer space, and that it's uh, being kept a secret. Um, so I, I look at this thing, and it's almost like an altar, and um, it's kind of like backlit. And there's this statue of the Virgin Mary, and I knew that it was the Queen of Heaven, um, but it's not standing up. She's laying down, and uh, it's made out of white stone, and it has several white stone eggs um, lined up next to it, like like she's. And I have this understanding, like she's given birth to them, and I'm thinking, but this is a dead stone. It's can't, like, nothing dead could give birth to anyway. So it did, that part didn't make sense to me. But that was my understanding. Um, and I also had understanding that these eggs were in a state of incubation. 
and they looked like they were large. They looked like reptile eggs. And I thought to myself, um, but anyway, that just this whole scene was very strange. It didn't make sense. Um, there was a there was a huge snake, um, like a python, in a glass cage um, on the floor, like next to them. And I had understanding that this snake was there for the purpose of feeding whatever was about to hatch out of the eggs that the Queen of Heaven had laid. And then I woke up. So. Um, if you haven't watched any of Jonathan Kleck's K L E C K um, videos about the Queen of Heaven, about what this reptilian, what these reptilian eggs represent, um, I recommend that you do that um, because it, it will help, I think, explain this dream that I had. Um, so suffice it to say for now that what's coming. Um, from outer space is going to um, manifest itself, I believe, soon. And uh, this is, I mean, several times now the Lord has given me dreams or visions about something being birthed. And um, and again, here we have something being birthed in their, their reptile eggs. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at that as far as um, the interpretation of the dream. But I want to um, share with you the scriptures that the Lord gave me um, to go with this. So 2 Chronicles 33, 1 through 10. Um, so this is about Manasseh, um, who was 12 years old when he began to reign. and um, it's, But then he, he reigned for 55 years. Um, so it says, but, but he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahovah, like unto the abominations of the heathen whom Yahovah had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places, which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Balaam, and made groves, which kind of reminds me of like Bohemian Grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Okay, so uh, let's see. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahovah, and he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the sons of Hinnom. If you don't know what that is, um, I recommend that you do some research on that and, and, and what that is and how that manifests today. Um, I believe it. Um, it's talking about abortion and that's how it's manifesting today. Um, and he also observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of Yahovah to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, an idol, which he had made in the house of Elohim. And then skipping down, it says, So Manasseh made Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom Yahovah had destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahovah spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. So I think a lot of this is representative of our world today. <clears throat> and then he also took me to 2 Esdras, chapter 1, um, starting in verse 28. Thus says El Shaddai Yahovah, have I not prayed you as a father his sons, as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young babes, that you would be my people, and I should be your Elohim? that you would be my children and I should be your father. I gather you together as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. When you offer to me, I will turn my face from you. For your solemn feast days, your new moons, and your circumcisions have I forsaken. So if you're in disobedience, those things mean nothing to him. When you offer to, oh, let's see, I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom you have taken and slain and tore their bodies in pieces, whose blood I will require at your hands, says Yehovah. Thus says El Shaddai, Yehovah, your house is desolate. I will cast you out as the wind does stubble, and your children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandment and have done the thing that is evil before me. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which have 
which not having heard of me yet shall believe me, to whom I have showed no signs, yet they shall do as I have commanded them. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things that I say. So that last part is a prophecy about uh, us, really, those of us who have not seen um, the Lord with our own eyes. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't have the Old Testament prophets coming to us. Um, but so there's a lot of there's a lot of meaning, I think, in this chapter in Second Ezra. So I encourage you to go and, and read it. If you don't have a copy of the Apocrypha, I'm not going to argue with you about whether it's divinely inspired or not. Um, I personally believe the Lord's been ministering to me through these books. Um, anyway, you can you can download most of the stuff online. So um, I'm going to leave it at that for today. Baruch um, Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen.